Hey yo beautiful people, how are you today? Let me know in the comments down below and if you're enjoying Endwalker, what you guys think so far. So, quick little update before we get started, but uh, kind of frustrated because I'm having this weird issue with OBS where when I do this, I, it just looks kind of funky. Uh, I don't know why. And I trust me, you know, I've gone through, I, I literally have clean reinstalled clean installed, I mean, uh, OBS and the Elgato so uh, software. I've gone out of my way to try to figure this out, and it's just what it is. Uh, and I'd like to note it's in preview that it acts up on me. So if anybody knows anything about that, let me know. It's almost like it's stuck somewhere between 720p and 1080p. Like, it, it sometimes is, and sometimes it's not. It's like, I, I don't know. It's really hard to explain. But I can't stress enough it has nothing to do with my actual recording settings. And I do know what I, I do know a lot about this stuff, actually. I knew about it but way before I ever started doing it. Because I took like video production and web design and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, video production. But like for some reason in the preview, it's like the signal I'm getting from OBS uh, or, I'm sorry, that OBS is getting from Elgato is kind of messed up. But in the Elgato software, it's perfectly fine. Again, only in the preview, uh, which is exceptionally fucking weird. So we'll just have to put up with it for now. I think the quality is acceptable, but it should be better. And I, I apologize for that. I just, I don't know if it's a limitation with uh, the Elgato uh, that I have uh, and OBS just, it can't get any better than it is. So, you know, uh, travelers at the crossroads. Uh, Hithlodeus wishes to discuss plans for the remainder of your visit. Where to now? If there is anywhere you would like to visit before we leave, I should be glad to show you the way. Hermes is not yet outright refused his position with the convocation. Merely postpone the decision. As such, I may as well resume my assessment. If we cannot accompany him, then I will content myself with questioning his colleagues. Ever the pragmatist, then allow me to remain your humble guide. And what of you, Shosov? Will you continue along with us? Yeah, sure. Wonderful! Our fellowship travels on Unbroken. I say we explore another part of Elpis and see what new encounters there are to be had. If you would follow me, we will first head back towards Anag um, uh, Anagnorisis. Anagnorisis. I, it's one of those words. It's just, I, I'm bad with pronouncing stuff anyway, man, but like, oof. From here, we follow the path to, uh, northwards to Natonius. There we will find one of the teleporters which facilitate travel between the island of Elpis. First time travelers must be accompanied by someone with the requisite permission, which I have previously been granted. We only need to use the device together once, and henceforth you will have leave to use it freely. Shall we? Cool. N new part of Elpis. What up, Heath? Heath? Here we are, Natonius. This teleporter will take us to Calamilios. Zephyros? Uh, Calimili ah, Calimilio Zephyros. Uh, the western island. That's it right there. Looming large over us, my whole voice. Oh no. <clears throat> Step this way, and we can soon admire the view from above. Am I gonna get a cutscene about this area? Mm hmm. It's voice too. It looks like it anyway. It's not using a flat, relatively static camera. I present to you Kalamelios Zephyros. Here you will find a number of testing facilities, as well as the observation hub of Poiton Oikos. Right then. Let's begin by... Hmm. Well, well. An Arrayus. How delightful. I also thought I was going to chuck that rock at him. Oh. And what, pray tell, is that? Oh, sorry. I had to my, my answer guy, it, it dropped like 20 degrees. Uh, the way he said that was pretty good. Ah, that's a new species of shark. We approved the concept but a few days ago. Sharks are among the most popular sea creatures. Rare is the day when someone does not submit a new concept. 
At first, they were largely orthodox, consideration given to such things as size and environmental impact. And then a whimsical someone thought to bestow it with flight, another superior intelligence. And then the floodgates burst, concepts with multiple heads or arms or legs or arms and legs, and so on and so forth. It was getting absurd. A part of me wanted to tell them to go away and find something else to create, but in the end, I couldn't deny their passion. And here we are. Where the subtitles go? That was weird. Hello? Oh, is that a Vana? That was too close. Are you unharmed? Well now, if it isn't a pair of familiar faces. Vana, that we should meet you here. <laughs> I meant some background. Yeah. I was wondering why Heidelin had an Asian mask. It makes sense now. As I mentioned earlier, the better part of the convocation holds that when we retire is when we return to the star. Well, she is not among said majority. Even after stepping down, she carries on with her work. Ooh, okay. I like how she Benar only attacked that thing. And she is the previous Azen. Oh, what the? Wait a minute. Why, wait a minute. Wait. 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 <laughs> wait a minute. It has been a while, Hithlidaeus. You look well. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, Emmet Selk. I dare say the lines upon your brow have both deepened and doubled in number. Oof. But hang on, can we go back to that? A shame for one so young. You must make an effort to frown less often. Oh. That. Yeah, he's never going to do that. Easier said than done, thanks to your unruly successor. How is he, if I may ask? That makes sense, though, why she chose us then, if. You know, because uh, it seems like they have, uh, you know, the ability to pick their own successor. They just have to get reviewed. And she probably picked him, whoever the other guy is, because uh, obviously they have a, he has his own name, not just a Zem. Hmm. So that makes a lot of sense why she uh, called out to us, especially. Incorrigible as ever. Rushed headlong into a volcano on the brink of eruption just the other day. I should be glad to share the tale in its entirety later, if you're so inclined. You know I am. Now then, you are? Say, have you perchance come from the future? What? No. I, I didn't do that. We have ever met, yet I sense my magic upon you. Therefore, if I wove the enchantment, I could only have done so at a later point in time. What manner of magic is this, if I may ask? A traveler's ward, of course. It prevents the corruption of one's ether. Does it protect you from enthrallment by primals by any chance? Uh... Does it protect you from enthrallment by primals by any chance? Primals, they, you yes, say. they don't know what it is. But I'm not familiar with such beings. But if they enthrall by warping the balance of ether, then yes, the magic would afford you a measure of protection. I gather from your question that you are not ignorant to its presence. Hold on. From the future? That's absurd.
What is it? Are you unable to speak of the matter? The reality to which you must return exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. I'm sorry, but I cannot say. Oh, that's no, he's just spilling the beans. I'm kidding. So. Your actions here will not change your history, but they may yet affect the course of ours. Oh my god, no, no, no. Wait, Dragon Ball stuff? Like, how Tr Trunks still had to kill Cell? Wait a minute. How very exciting. I'm quite fond of delving into the unknown, and there's naught more unknown than the future. This is going to be weird. Until a moment finally arrives, we cannot know for certain what will come to pass, regardless of our supposed foreknowledge. So you needn't worry for us. I do like Vanar's voice, though. It's sort of good. More importantly, that you should go to such great lengths as to travel unto the past bespeaks the gravity of your quest. Sorry, I'm checking you stuff. I do. To us. Mayhap we can be of aid to your cause. Because I had to clean it, clean install OBS. I had to reset everything, and uh, yeah, I'm just making sure shit's not being weird. <sighs> if this is true, then you've been keeping quite the secret to yourself. As a representative of the Convocation, I will hear it all. Your identity, purpose, everything. Does that include me kicking your butt? I can't stop making that joke. I don't know why. Why don't we move to a place more conducive to calm conversation? I've been working here for some days now at an old friend's behest. If it is agreeable, we may make use of my accommodation at Point and Oikos. We were meant to meet. I am certain of it. Else I wouldn't have marked you so clearly and sent you unto myself in the past. It's precisely the sort of mischief I would get up to. I'm quite inspired, if I do say so myself. Again, there's always a chance that Heidelin is not also going to end up being an evil D-bag. That would be nice. We'll see, though. My apologies, but before we move along, a colleague has tasked me with a matter which I'd rather not leave unresolved. It involves finding a certain concept engraved crystal, and the quick-fingered Orias uh, Oriava. I forget how they pronounced it. Uh, I think it was uh, or just Oreas or Oreas, uh, has, which made off with it. In Oreas, you say? I think we might have seen the culprits before being distracted by that business with the shark. Would you like us to follow its ethereal trail? That would, of course, lead us only to the Oreas. There's no guarantee that it hasn't dropped or stashed away the crystal you seek. Please. Even that much would be enormously helpful. While you are hunting down the thief, I can follow behind and scour the forest floor just in case. But I ask you to join the search. I would appreciate another pair of eyes to cover the land to the west of here. Yeah, I can help. Many thanks. There's a small bridge leading to, uh, into uh, Poitan Icos, I think is how they said it. Let us meet up there once we've exhausted our efforts. Concept crystal. What? Well, that was actually it. Okay, I thought it was gonna be like, oh, this was just a shiny object. Our last searcher returns. I am afraid the Aureus no longer had the crystal, nor was I able to find it as I followed in its wake. I don't suppose you fared any better. Actually, I found the crystal, at least if this is what you're looking for. Crystal! Well done! Wonderful! Now I can focus on your tale without that missing concept nagging at my mind. Have you always had a knack for finding things? 
<laughs> um, this is uh, uh, great. I've often been asked to do so. Oh, you too? Some of us seem destined to always be searching for ourselves and for others. Long ago, when I held the seat of Vazem, I was forever trekking back and forth across the star in search of answers to people's problems. Naturally, the need for such journeys has lessened considerably since I entrusted the position to my whimsical successor. Yet I am still eager to come running, should an old acquaintance or new interest require my personal attention. That is what brings me to Elpis, in fact. Many times has my presence been requested, my opinion sought concerning the habitat of this or that creation. Agreeing to help locate that missing crystal was a minor distraction, which now promises to become a major revelation. How strange and wonderful. Uh, wonderful it is the way one thing leads to another. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, at first, not yet. A pass not yet come to pass. Bana is in a cheerful mood. Thank you again for your timely help. Now then, tis time I return this stolen property. If you would go on ahead to my accommodation, I will join you as soon as I have attended to that task. Follow the path straight ahead to the building at the top of the slope. I have the entire place to myself, so we can speak without fear of being disturbed or overheard. Well, that's good. I'm kind of curious if we're going to create an alternate timeline. Welcome to my temporary abode. Please make yourself at home while I put on some tea. Tea. Like my lips. Like my... I feel like dehydrated even though I drank like a whole bottle of water before starting recording. I think it's just that huge drop in temperature. It's drying me out. <laughs> ah, a wonderful aroma. I feel more relaxed already. Would that I had sweetmeats to offer, but I travel light out of habit. There's plenty of hot water though, so please have as much tea as you like. Now then, will you tell us your tale? It sort of sounds like the Heavens Ward, um, uh, you know, but broken into shards. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, this is the Heavens Ward. At least I think it's only in Heaven. Not only in Heavens Ward, but from Heavens Ward. But they use the song a lot. But it sounds slightly different. I don't know if I'm just being crazy. Not really sure which one of these I want to say. Hmm. I guess I should start with this. The world has been sundered, broken into shards. Why don't you start from the beginning? My throat is too dry to relay all that information. <laughs> you guys know, normally I roleplay the hell out of this, but... Yeah, <laughs> my voice. Oh? Were they talking about the boy? Pathetic. Damn, we skyrocketed. I was like, damn, dude. We went from, um, A Realm Reborn to, uh, the end of Shadowbringer. It was pretty quick. But I get it. There's no point in just, like, showing every fucking thing, major event that happened. Most people already know. People who bought skips might even know just from watching and or reading about it. Preposterous. Utterly preposterous. While not the words I would have chosen, I too have my doubts. Much of it borders on the incredulous. 
Welcome to my life, Ithildaeus. Not knowing the precise details of the first final days, it is difficult to determine the veracity of the tale. Supposing it is all true, I must ask myself why I would do what I did. Yeah. Why would I feel I had no recourse but to oppose the 14 and create this Hydaelyn? Circumstances change, of course, but it would not have been an easy decision regardless. No, there must have been a reason. One compelling enough to force me to take such drastic measures. Then there is the Elpis flower, which I said would serve as a guide. That it's of import to your mission is plain, but your presence here leads me to believe that this place also holds significance. Yeah, I feel like the emotional thing is good, like part of the guide, right? But it's it definitely, uh, you know, must be alluding to Elpis. But what like could the place. it be? What are we meant to accomplish? Might it not be simply thus? In the future whence he came, the final days could not be averted. Mankind has no choice but to flee the star. By alerting us to that eventuality, perhaps you wish to pave the way for other futures. Theoretically speaking, it is a possibility. Yet if that were my primary objective, I see no reason to guide our friend to Elpis specifically. The capital and Amarod, or even my own home, would be more logical destinations. True, true. I note also that Hydaelyn did not specify a point in time to which he must return. By this, it may be inferred that it was not critical that we should meet. Alternately, she had reason to believe that our paths would converge, coincidental though it may seem. Hmm, this is quite a puzzle, and we do not have all the pieces. Hardly any, but we do have one immutable fact. If the final days are indeed as described, they will bring death to all that I hold dear. Yet despite being afforded long years of preparation, the only provisions I could make were for flight. Nay, my first and foremost endeavor would be to find a way to forestall the coming doom. Given that even the 14 failed, mayhap you deemed it impossible. Nothing is impossible. This I have always believed. There's always a way. If is indeed me, she would believe the same. Listen to yourself. Are you seriously entertaining the notion that you are a messianic figure in some far-fetched tale? Well, I will not. I refuse to accept that our world could be undone by some unforeseen calamity. I also take offense to my portrayal as a megalomaniacal madman. <laughs> uh, well, you see... To sacrifice oneself for the star is a noble act, and I would hold those who gave themselves to this zodiac in the highest esteem. Yet... You claim I recreated Amarot and populated it with phantoms of our people? A bizarre indulgence that would be insulting to their memory. Worse still, I even invited you there. Literally invited my own downfall. Why would I do something so idiotic and inexplicable? Now... I will allow that the hypothetical task of restoring our world would be daunting in the extreme. The thought of having to bear such a burden for a thousand, thousand lives horrifies me. Sorry for a weird edit. I'm just monitoring OBS, paranoid, you know? 
But I would never forsake my duty. I would never forsake my brethren. You do not know me. I've had my fill of your fiction. I will return to my duty, and you will not bother me again. Emmett Selk! Wait! It's easy to say what you would do, you know? Another thing to go through it and You've experience seen much it. Of Elpis already. If you have any observations to share, I should like to hear them. Uh... Hmm... Hermes and Metian are somehow involved. Hermes and his creation Meteon, you say? If Dynamis is the self-same energy as Akasha, as it likely seems, then those two may well be at the center of the calamity to come. This warrants further investigation. With that settled, it is time for action. The missing pieces of the puzzle are here, I'm certain of it. And when you find them, the picture my future self has painted will be complete, and you will have your answer. And suffice it to say, I will aid you in your quest. Have faith. If Emmet Selk is the man Azum described to me, we've not seen the last of him. I'm really interested where the story is going. Shall we begin our investigations then? I'm acquainted with Hermes, of course, but only as a visitor received by the chief overseer of Elpis. Of the man himself, I know only that which is common knowledge. Thus I suggest we fall back and on the tried and true method of conversing with the local. The observers who live here can surely tell us more of Hermes and Meteon, and I have a good idea of where we might begin. Okie dokie. See you the woman standing in front of yonder building. Her name is Ismin. She is the one who made arrangements for my stay in Elpis, and from what I recall, she has held her position here for quite some time. Chances are she can provide us with some insights. Go and ask your questions, and I will help you with <clears throat> I will help with drawing out answers if need be, but I leave the choice of topic up to you. My whole throat <laughs> wait. XP bonus fate. Sooner hit 90 the better. <laughs> oh, that's way down there though. Questions for me? Well, I suppose I have no other pressing duties at the moment. The following event cannot be skipped. Begin asking questions. Am I gonna for once be the one asking the questions for real? Greetings, this mean. My friend here is desperately furious about Chief Hermes, and I was wondering if you might indulge him. Certainly, Mistress Vanar. Anything to be of service. What do you wish to know? What kind of person is Hermes? Well, I can only answer that from my own experience, but... I would describe him as a quiet man. Reserved, you might say, and occasionally somewhat poor, with his choice of words. His reticent nature, however, does not prevent him from carrying out his duties as chief overseer. The man is a walking archive when it comes to life forms. He can discuss any species in incredible detail, and as the leading authority on concepts with the power of flight. I hope that answers your question. Was there anything else? Uh, how long has Meteon been here? I cannot rightly say. As the chief's personal creation, Meteon has not been subjected to observation and study like other concepts. So one day she was simply there, and what do you make of her abilities? I understand that she is a highly unusual familiar, able to read emotions and communicate directly with one's mind. 
Exactly how she was created with that talent, however, is a mystery to me. My apologies, I wish I could explain her nature in more depth, but I've not had occasion to discuss it with Chief Hermes. Do you trust him? I beg your pardon? I've known Chief Hermes for many years. Though I cannot say we are close, he has never withheld information to the detriment of our duties, if that is what you mean. Forgive us. We seem to have we uh, veered slightly off course here. Is there perhaps someone else who could tell us more about Meteon? That would be Timaios. Timaios? Uh, he has a similar expertise with flying concept and is more than eager to discuss the subject. You'll find him conducting his observations on the banks of the, s of the stream somewhere to the east. Oh, and uh, unless you take a particular joy in rambling discourse, I suggest you keep your questions concise. We shall keep that in mind. Thank you for your patience and your insight. Think nothing of it. If there is aught, you el uh, aught else you need during your stay, please do not hesitate to ask. Come, Chosov. I think we've taken enough of this means time. Our investigation is off to a fine start, wouldn't you agree? From here, I propose that we split up. I shall continue making inquiries with the resident observers. If you could track down the colleague Ismin mentioned. While I did feel compelled to interject once or twice during that previous conversation, you seem more than capable of drawing forth the answers you seek. All I ask is that you want your footing around the stream. We can meet back here once you finish speaking with this Timaeus. Timaeus. Tim, Tim, Tim. Yes, yes, I am Timaeus, but please keep your voice down. Don't startle the birds. Bye! So what is it you wish to speak about? Is it true you're an expert of flying? What do you think of Hermes' flying creation? What do you think of Chief Hermes' flying creations? Chief Hermes' work? A worthy subject, indeed. Those beings which soar through the clouds, majestic and graceful, are ever a favorite of creators. Even now, with so many varieties in existence, the flood of newly imagined concepts continues unabated. What sets the chief's creations apart, however, is how they benefit from his boundless knowledge of the celestial realm. Birds that climb so high that they disappear from view, others which traverse the boundless sky in moments, and all without riding the currents. I know of none save he who can conceive of such marvels. Even we who prize elegance of form above all else are dumbfounded by his genius. Etion 2 is a marvel then? My opinion on that matter would be superficial at best. Despite my admiration for Meteon as a concept, I have never delved too deeply into the inner workings of her nature. I know that she has a gift for communicating via emotions, but otherwise her abilities are a mystery to me. If Chief Hermes should choose to submit Meteon's concept to the Bureau of the Architect, then will the design be registered for public scrutiny. Analyzing a colleague's creation before that step is the ground upon, to say the least. Of course, if he came to me, a fellow artisan looking for advice, that would be an entirely different story. Until he is. Uh. Hmm. But I don't... I could tell you more of Meteon's nature, if you like. No, 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 no. Did I not just explain how that was frowned upon? I didn't possibly circumvent conventional practice by... Hmm. Unless you were showing such info... Showing... <laughs> Such information in the hopes of receiving a constructive opinion on the application of advanced creation techniques, then I would be practically obligated to... Uh-oh. Did I do the thing that I wasn't... Uh-oh. I guess there's no really wrong thing for me to do. So you see, ethically, I have no choice but to allow you to disclose Meteon's lesser-known qualities. Dynamis and Entelechies. Damn it, I should have said that. <laughs> I just was, I wanted to know if I knew anything. Those terms do sound vaguely familiar. Was there not a flower made here in Elpis which exhibited properties of one or the other? It must have been centuries since I last heard anyone speak of such things. And you know how they relate to Meteon and her design? No, I do not actually. Then why bring up the subject? I'm flattered that you sought my insight, but I cannot have dying, afford to neglect my duties for the sake of idle chatter. Now, I really must return to my observations. Surely you have your own tasks to attend to? Ah, uh, good timing. I finished my own investigations not long ago. So, have you any new findings to share? Well, not exactly, but I mean, I got some info. I see. 
Even an expert in the field had little understanding of Meteon's capabilities, let alone an awareness of Dynamis. My question resulted in much the same answers. Hermes' colleagues view Meteon as his personal project, and could provide no details beyond those which you just told me. Which leads me to believe that the only person with any significant knowledge of Dynamis is Hermes himself. Yes, we've made some progress here, but more information is needed if we're to reach any definitive conclusions. Bow, bow, bow. Uh, witness to the spectacle. Uh, Bonazzo, something about your recent findings. At present, the strongest link we have to the final days is the power of Dynamis and the Entelechies which can control it. Yet most scholars are only vaguely aware of these terms, let alone study them in depth. Except for Hermes, it seems. Thus, I am inclined to stay our current course and learn all we can about the Chief Overseer and his familiar. And on that subject, was there aught else of note you can tell me about Meteon, aside from her unorthodox method of communication? She has sisters, she has sisters with greater... Uh, there are more like her, she, she has sisters? I rather wish you had mentioned that earlier. In any event, would you care to elaborate? Well... I guess that there's been more than one of her, and they've been sent out of the star into space. So these siblings of her now travel the great expanse in search of deeper meaning. Thank you. Though the mystery at hand remains unresolved, I feel you've touched upon a vital clue, one we should keep in mind as we continue. Next, I propose we take ourselves to Peperra Crystalline, <laughs> uh, Peripatea Crystalline, not far from here. Just follow the path to the west. This tower and the one further along are both part of Peripatea, uh, Peripidia? <laughs> Crystalline, the facility where they archive all of uh, Elpis's observational and testing records. Despite how they appear from the outside, the interior is actually a vast area of magically in, uh, interconnected places, which, while fascinating, is not the reason we are here, is it? I shall cut my architectural lesson short and see what the uh, what those two archivists have to share. Magnus Archives. Uh, if you could find someone to speak with over at the other tower, I shall join you there anon. Okie dokie. You have questions for me? Certainly. Just a moment while I conclude my current appointment. Indeed. So if you could provide a comprehensive log of those behaviors, we should then have sufficient data for our official records. Now, what was it you wish to speak to me, uh, speak with me about? The Chief Overseer's personal research project? And by that I assume you mean Meteon. Such undocumented studies are difficult to track. After all, hardly a day goes past without seeing a researcher trailed by one creation or another. I'm afraid I cannot tell you exactly when Meteon appeared, only that she now spends much of her time at Chief Hermes' side. Sorry, talking to Corrin. Although I do recall an interesting tale my dearest Galene shared with me, or Gal Galene. What's that? Ah, Galina's is my partner and a fellow researcher here in Elpis. She was returning late one night when she caught sight of Chief Hermes sending me to on Heavensward, a host of them. For several days, she would speak of that scene with wonder, describing it as one of the most beautiful spectacles she had ever witnessed. That sounds like a story I would like to hear. Mistress Vana! I thought you had already returned to the surface. Permit me to thank you again for your invaluable contribution to our concept placement proposal. Pray do not mention it. As you say, my original plan was to leave after that task, but I have since become engrossed with Chief Hermes' research. Would you favor me with a retelling of, uh, of this site of which so delighted you, Galeen? Sorry. Uh, hiccups. Uh. <laughs> of course, if you could hear it from her lips directly... Or you could hear it from Rigorfully if you prefer. At present, she should be observing a subject in Metabasios Thalassi. That's what the fucking names. She does enjoy her time there, watching the sea creatures hunt and play, 
gazing upon the salty waters of the world's oceans recreated in such sublime detail. I keep forgetting we're not technically on. We are on the planet. We're just at like a part of it, like a very specific part of it that's designed for this. I, I keep forgetting it's not just an area. I imagine you must find similar joy in indulging your boundless curiosity, Mistress Fanar. Even though such pursuits must continually and regretfully, regretfully delay your return to the star. Indeed, they do. His arrest well deserved and long overdue, I should think. How greatly have we uh, prospered for the wisdom you accumulated during your travels as a Zem. And what would help us be without your earlier academic work? The theories you developed served as the basis of many techniques still in use today. Man is a creature of contemplation, but none embody that nature with as much enduring passion as you. I, I dare say there is not a soul alive more worthy of a return. I shall rejoice the day you depart on your final journey. I will be honored. Well, shall we take this opportunity to meet with Galen in person? Yeah. Then allow me to reconfigure the door to the archives here. It will take you up to the skyway and spare you the need to avoid hostile concepts on the ground. That would be most helpful, thank you. I've opened the path to the skyway. Since you pass through the door, simply walk uh, once you pass, simply walk straight across to the next tower and ask for admittance to the upper tier. Upon arriving at the upper tier, walk straight across the skyway and you will find yourself to the entrance are at the entrance to Metabasios Thalassi. Or Thalassi? It could be a silent age. Hey, Blaze, thanks. Galene will be eager to share her tale with you, I am sure. Is this just a cutscene, or is this like an instant area? Okay, cool. It's not anything I particularly have to worry about. Mistress Fana, just passing through? Then allow me to prepare the path. If you need further assistance, there is always an observer or two out on the upper uh, skyway. Damn it, hella pretty up here, though. Is super pretty. This lady or unhurried observer. Hello? Oh god, come on. Mistress Fana, I was not told to expect we would have prepared an official welcome. Please, there is no need for fanfare. I only wish to speak with Galeen, if that might be arranged. Yes, Galeen, of course. I will inform I inform her immediately. Ah, uh, but she may be uh, engaged in a testing phase. You could be in for something of a wait. Should I let her know your business is urgent? That won't be necessary. This lovely view will keep us occupied until she is ready to receive us. Well, good thing I'm time traveling, I guess. At least it's not a waste of my time. I've got nothing but. A delightful breeze and a breathtaking view. Well, you're right. Elpis is beautiful. What is it like in the future? Is the world still a beautiful place? Some parts, yes, others not so much. Um, I feel like Shosov loves the world. I don't want to say, like, others not so much, because, like, even Garlemald in, in its own way is beautiful. It's just in disarray. It's as beautiful as ever. Hmm. I swear I could hear the glimmer in your eyes and the adoration in your voice. While we wait... Will you not tell me about your adventures? Well, not the portentous events which led you here, but the simple delights all your own. By learning about the future world, I may gain insight into future me's plans. But more than that, I have an interest simply as a fellow traveler. Short of going somewhere oneself, there's naught more stirring than hearing another's account. It'd be cute if we got to pick things to talk about, but I get it. There's too much. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I want to know what she. What, what, what we're talking about? Uh, uh, Hildebrand was what made her laugh. Yeah, I kind of wish we could pick like maybe one thing per expansion. That would have been cute, but incredible. <laughs> would that I could have been there to see it. But there's just too much, man. This game is beyond everything. Yours is a harsh and unforgiving world. Yet in spite of this, your brethren hold fast to their virtue. To know that the light of mankind's potential still shines, even in that faraway place, it gives me heart. That was a great shot of her, by the way. Thank you for regaling me with your tales. I will treasure every word. As you know, I was once a scholar. And among other things, I sought to understand the workings of the world. What exactly is ether? How formed the laws of nature? When sprung mankind? Riddles and mysteries beyond counting. Over the years, I have managed to find answers to some few of them. Yet rather than attain a sense of mastery, the more I understood, the more I came to hold the world and its miracles in awe. Yeah, that's the beauty of life sometimes. We too are miracles. Each and every one of us. Born of the warm breath of life that traverses the heavens, swirling through eternity. When I fully grasped the improbability of our existence, Nothing felt impossible anymore. If it could be imagined, it could be done. A passion swelled within me. An epiphany dispelling all preconceptions of what was natural and true. And a presence without. Immense, yet intimate. Fate, perhaps. Holding us in its tender embrace. As reassuring as it was intimidating. How keenly aware I became of creation's fragility. Built as it is upon precarious happenstance. I was overcome with an irrepressible urge to know the world more intimately. To hear its voice. Feel its breath. I ventured forth on a journey that very day. So very long ago now. Freed from presumption and prejudice, I saw the world through a newborn's eyes. Everything fresh and new. And so, so beautiful. Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all a people, beacons of light and life, laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. Shit, this is a beautiful speech, by the way. They are my meaning and my purpose, my love. And so long as they need help, I cannot return to the star. Perhaps my future self is still waiting for it. A moment she can let go and walk unto the end. Safe in the knowledge that man will find his own way. You, who are our future, tell me this and tell me true. Has your journey been good? Has it been worthwhile? Is this an actual choice, or is it just gonna, you know? Because I already know what I would say. Wow, what a good fucking shot of our characters, dude! Pray forgive my lateness. <laughs> I like that technically it's kind of left up to you. It's not even a decision, it's just my left up to you. My observation subject was rather irritable, and it took a while to settle it down. No need to apologize. Your work takes precedence. Besides, we had a pleasant conversation in the meantime. 
You're too kind. Now then, I'm told you wished to ask me some questions. Indeed. I've an interest in one of Hermes's creations. Meteon. You witnessed a host of them take flight, yes? Oh, that! Yes, yes, I did. Twas in the dark of the morn. I'd left the Thalassi after nocturnal observation. As I walked along, I spied a bright light climbing high into the southeastern skies. Then, in an instant, it was gone. Like a shooting star, only rising rather than falling. But then another shot up. Then another, and another. D intrigued, I made my way to the edge to investigate. And who should I spy on an isle to the south but Hermes and Meteon? Uh, the Matea, rather. The Matea? There were lots of them, and I realized they must be the shooting stars that I'd seen. A dazzling spectacle indeed. Have you spoken with Hermes about this? Oh, yes. The sight left such an impression on me that I approached him about his mystery project the very next day. Alas, he said that he couldn't reveal anything just yet, that he needed to conduct further tests. <laughs> it shouldn't be long now, though. He often returns to that isle, and I have a feeling he's nearing a breakthrough. Sorry for any weird cuts. I am dying a little. Splendid. We are likewise eager for the details. Well, that is all we wish to ask. Thank you for taking the time to indulge our curiosity. You're very welcome. It's always a pleasure to speak with other inquisitive souls. Oh, and will you be descending now? If so, I shall link the doors for you. Please. So, another piece of the puzzle falls into place. From what we've learned thus far, I, can't, um, I think we can safely conclude that Hermes hasn't been revealing the details of his research to the others, which suggests that either someone will appropriate his discoveries and make use of them, or that Hermes himself will have a hand in causing the final days. Since we have no reason yet to suspect the former, we should consider the latter the more likely possibility. Proceeding under that assumption, our next step should be to define why or even if he might desire such a terrible fate for our star. Hmm. Ah, uh, what does that say? Worthy of his back. Banar has a new course of investigation in mind. I should like to visit this site from which Hermes sent forth the Matea. If we are fortunate, we might find some hint of what drives this research of his. Galene said she spotted them in the southeast, rising from an isle she could see from the edge. If we stand- I'm dying! If we stand at that same vantage point, it should not prove too difficult! What the fuck? You look at the isle in question. Let's take a look, shall we? Sorry. Spent all day yesterday trying to fix this stuff in OBS, and then I didn't get much sleep. And then instead of taking a nap when I finally was back home, decided to stay up and report. <laughs> Now, if I were conducting some mystery research, where would I go? Ah, oh, what about that one? Have you the means to fly? Tis quite a distance away. No, unfortunately. Not yet. Hmm, inconvenient, but hardly an insurmountable problem. To me, Argos, the dog! I am the dog! The big bad dog! Well, actually, big good dog. This has to be a thing we can get. My friend, would you mind creating a, uh, a double to carry shows off over there to that island? I wonder if this happens if you have the ether currents, though. Stubborn creature, there is no place on this star, on this great star we have not together traveled. And still he remains obstinate in the presence of strangers. Hey, that's important because Argos loved us. 
Remember? Because then we're not strangers anymore. It just, it remembered us. Argos has rather exacting standards, I'm afraid. <laughs> I actually met Argos in the future. What? You've ridden him before. Um, you're, you're before meaning my after. Not at all confusing that. Interesting. It's certainly not unthinkable. Uh, but speaking of the here and now, the quick solution is for us to face off in a sparring match. Wait, wait a minute, what? Demonstrate to him that you are capable of holding your own against me in battle, and you should convince Argos that you are worthy of his back. And besides, I might even teach you a thing or two into the bargain. You seem doubtful. But useful lesson or not, it will certainly be a moment to remember. A memory of the distant past to cherish. What say you, traveler out of time? Choose your battlefield. Yeah. Alright, choose your battlefield then. I admire your confidence. Clear your mind and prepare your weapons. I will await you at the clearing over yonder. Alright, Vana. I don't know how strong y'all motherfuckers were back in this time, but I ain't nothing to laugh at. Yo, what? This is a solo instance? I was just about to make a joke, like, what? watch me get Raffle stomped and she's actually the hardest solo instance in the game. Shall we begin? Be warned, I'll not go easy on you. Let's go. Unfortunately, I still don't have big boss summons and I won't for a bit. <laughs> cool. Neither side, hold back. Wrong thing. Ow! I had my shield up, Vana! My blade sings! Ah! Good thing I moved. In case she runs, I'm gonna summon uh, Ifri. Cool music. Wasn't expecting it. True blink. Ah! Okay, I'm fine. I'm alive. I've lived. Vana, your movements, though powerful, are predictable. You fool. Did, I like how she, did she just walk toward me? That was kind of cool, though. I'm not safe here. I'm in danger. Oh, what the hell? That's Paladin stuff. Wait, where was it? Okay, I could not remember it. I got kind of scared. My blade sings. No! Aha! But now you're a joke so far. But to be fair, this would be harder with other classes, like, I mean, other casters. I shall have to try something different. Like what? I got my Phoenix regen on now, motherfucker. Oh wait, did she just job change the dancer? What the fuck? <laughs> no oh, you think you a tough lady? Yes, I cast it in time, let's go. I wasn't sure if that was gonna work or not. Goddamn, by the way, ga uh, Gap Pose or Ground Pound Ifrit is uh, super fun, but I have a really big soft spot. Oh, what's it gonna be? Oh, oh, like the. Uh, uh, Boja. <gasps> now, nah, this is uh, so pretty easy, actually. <laughs> this kind of stuff would be a lot harder in like a uh, true environment, methinks. Oh, get back in there. You get back in my AOE, motherfucker. I see you won't be easily overcome, but neither will I. What you doing now? Job changing to White Mage Conjurer or whatever. Wow, this music is really pretty though. True arrow four. Ow! Oh. Wrong button. These go off one at a time or Oh. Oh, they're perma AoEs. Got it. Prepare yourself. 
No, this is bad. Okay, this is actually bad. Okay, okay. Credit where credit is due, Vina. Bit stronger than I expected you to be. Was that one thing still chasing me? You cheeky dick. Not really anywhere for me to. I got out in time. I wasn't, I was trying to skedaddle on over there, but I fucked it up. Okay, at least you got a little harder. True stone four. Is this gonna hurt? Ah, oh, oh, oh. Wait, Shiva. Wasn't it middle first, right? Yeah. Cool. Ah, joke's on you. Brought you back into my gunk. I was like, that's a Shiva mechanic. You bitch. <laughs> This is fun. This is a cool solo instance. Very well. Let us move to the final trial. Fuck your ether, bitch. Bruh, this one needs to die. Thank you. Yep. If you're a grandpa. Oh god, I'm trying to cast Ifrit! No! Okay, Ifrit almost screwed me. Oh, boink. Oh god, no! My hot bar! Yeah, we got this. Watch this. Yeah, Titan, motherfucker. I'm kind of scared that if she gets literally any of this, I'm just dead. Good thing you didn't get- Oh my god! That is so fucking mini! Come on, we can do this! Oh no, motherfucker, that's so many! Ah! Ah! No, Ether for you! No! You are not allowed to get a single ether. I don't I don't know. I'm scared that if she gets even one, I'm just dead. Is this gonna is this gonna bring me down to like one HP? No! Vanat, what are you doing to me? She left! It's so da whatever it is is so powerful that it will just she left me! Shed your burdens and show me your strength of will! Final Fantasy 15? Vanat! I'm not this isn't fun anymore! <laughs> <laughs> Made me think of Furion too, a little like oh so many weapons. Ow! <laughs> People of your time are more resilient than I had dared hope. Yeah, I'm alive. Oh, you done? This bitch just actually tried to murder me, bro. That was fun. And it's cool to see some of that crazy magics. Uh that was a fun one. It wasn't that hard though despite it seeming hard. Twas my intent to finish it, but clearly I underestimated you. You were trying to murder me? One would think I never learn. I made the same mistake with Azam when we first sparred. Despite being less than half my age, his strength was astounding. As is yours. It is plain you have weathered considerable hardship. Far more even than your tales would suggest. It seems we have both learned much on our journeys. Hello? Oh, doggo, duh. Oh. It's still weird to see, but... It's good to see you, Argos. Well now, I dare say he is warmed to you. I like this dog's like only royalty. To be sure, he never forgets his favorites and is ever eager to come to their aid. Cute. He's like no peasants, only gods and lords may join my steed. My join in my stead. <laughs> that shot's a little funny. I think it's the lighting. I think the lighting just made the dog look a little weird. 
Argos will soon have us standing on the very spot where the Matea made their departure into the night sky. With luck, we will learn something of Hermes' intentions. My hope is that we find no connection, no festering wish for oblivion. Then we might have Hermes and his considerable expertise working for us rather than against us. Yeah, that would be great. Uh-oh. A flower upon your return. Vanah uh, Vana has Argos and his double at heel. Let us move over to the edge before mounting, shall we? That will, uh, that will allow Argos to catch the currents rising up from below and give us a smooth ride over the aisle. So you're just making excuses for me to have to run over there. Well, the joke's on you. At least I got the riding map. Argos motions to his back with his muzzle. You've been given the go-ahead to hop on. Ride Argos to the aisle. Isn't this pleasant? Argos certainly seems to think so. It really is. It's really cool. This better be a mount. Clipping be damned. <laughs> oh, the way she rides it is cute. I just noticed. Now, what was the name of that tree? Zeno. <laughs> Nia, no, something, uh, uh, Notiferon. Quite something, something. I could, God, those always go too damn fast. How fucking cool, dude. It's really cool. This expansion's been great. Uh, I mean, like, who who, who would have guessed that Endwalker was going to be good after Shadowbringers was so good? Reese of the Landing wouldn't want you uh, tumbling off at the last moment. It would be really funny if I did just fall, though. Alright, there's a picture in this quest, which is concerning. I'm never, I don't trust pictures on quests. Quite a small place, lacking even the most basic equipment. And I, tr I trust uh, consistently moving dialogue even, even less. The present may yield no clues, but we may yet try perusing the past. Have you done this before? I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> this is my first time. So you cannot control the power freely. Worry not. I shall assist you. Come and stand before me. There are two ways to see the past. The first entails peering through the walls of the soul in the moment a subject is recalling a memory. The second requires no subject and is instead a process of piecing together an event from ripples left in the ambient ether. As memories are etched upon the ether of the soul, so too are they etched upon the ether of the world. In this way can history be preserved. Such memories are given to fading, however, and can prove challenging to visit. But come, let us try. Close your eyes. Oh, it's the echo. Duh! I forgot that we can do that. Well, not that I forgot, I guess, but I just, I was kind of thinking All about some, I don't know. functional and proceeding on course towards their respective stars. Interesting. Um, wasn't that I forgot about the echo exactly, but I just didn't even think about it. Estimated time to completion of survey is 108 cycles. End of status report. Severing connection with shared consciousness. What? What? Did you hear that, Hermes? All is well. Ah. <sighs> yes. Good tidings at long last. Every step of the way, I've been reminded how little we understand creation. How the universe defies imagination. But soon we won't need to... Speculate. We'll know the answers. What others live for. <laughs> Indeed. And we'll owe it all to you and your sisters. 
<laughs> Let her mouth hardly move in. What answers we will get? Whatever intelligent beings that exist out there are bound to be vastly different from us. Diverse in form and culture. Possessed of unique ways of thinking. Their conception of life and its purpose will be no exception. Completely and utterly unlike ours. Utterly unlike... How? <laughs> I have no idea. Yet whatever answers we receive, I will not dismiss them out of hand. No. I will think earnestly on them all. And I will share them with our people, that together we may contemplate our own existence. Perhaps then our star will become a better place. Not only for man, but for all life. I'm assuming... Meteon, though I gave you wings to soar the heavens, I did not teach you how to walk the earth. So loath was I to bind another living being. I'm really worried that the final days happen because of something happens to... So I'm... I'm I'm worried it's going to be not just because, and it's going to be sad. In the course of your long journey, you will learn from those you meet, learn to walk and run, and so much more. Like something happens to her or the others or something, and 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 oh, like maybe the convocation betrays him, and they just don't... I don't know. It's just concerning. And when you return, older and wiser, we will have a celebration to mark your homecoming and coming of age both. Will there be apples covered in syrup? <laughs> and how are you supposed to eat them? Hmm. Rather than food, perhaps... A flower. Yes. Upon your return, I will gift you a beautiful flower. Well, if we can use the echo freely, that would be helpful. Also, not getting massive migraines and seeing into the past and being completely vulnerable while doing it. So, what is your opinion? Hmm. Hermes is a gentle soul, and yet... I understand. He is a gentle soul, and well-intentioned. Yet it does not take ill intent to beget ill. We mm -hmm. must consider the possibility that something may have gone awry. Perhaps it was oversight, or simply an accident. This shit's gonna make me sad, isn't it? Oh, fuck. In light of this... I propose that we reveal your tale to Hermes himself. If he does not wish for the final days as we believe, he may well join us in pursuing a solution. Perhaps you're right. Then it is settled. Let us seek out our friend with all swiftness. It would not do to let such a pure soul be blackened by tragedy. Yeah, that or we are putting it in motion. But no, um, I'm worried something happens to Meteon or even the others. Wow, that was a weird animation. There are any number of places where Hermes might be in Elpis. Yeah. But we could do worse than to look in uh, Catissus Hy Hyperborea, the largest facility. It stands in, oh my god, Etho, Sole uh, Soleticos, or saw the Northern Isle. Sorry. I wonder, Shosov. Or an institution which claims to studiously research every species destined for release into the world. Did you not question how they find room for them all on so few islands? The answer lies with Catis- uh, I have no clue. Uh, Catisis itself. I touched upon the practice before, back at the archives, where a vast area stitched together out of multiple conceptual spaces. The same holds true 
or the interior of this facility and its magically constructed uh, environs. It is there within those sprawling habitats that the chief overseer and most of uh, Elpis's observers conduct the bulk of their work. Come, the simplest route is via the teleporter north, uh, north of Poitan Oil Horse. I'm, so, I'm such a hard time pronouncing all this shit. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Here's to be the teleporter Vanal told you about. Motes of light yet hang in the air, suggesting the device was but recently activated. Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, because she's not here waiting for us. I mean, unless she's just trust that we'll get there because we're adults. Um. Hey, what's up, Vana? Oh, good. The teleporter acknowledged you as my guest. You should now have the authority to use it as you wish. As for the way to Catissus Hyperborea, we follow this path, then turn left at the crossroads. Okie dokie. Oh, it's the end of the quest, too. Oh, there's an ether current, like, on the way. Let's go. If this is the end of the quest, what's about to happen? This isn't a dungeon, is it? Here we are, the grandest research facility in Elpis. Because, like, I haven't actually bothered to check what level we're at, uh, quest-wise. We should head inside and ask after Hermes' whereabouts. I'm probably just being here. Hermes is at another facility, as we have just discovered. Uh, Emmett? I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. Hello! <laughs> Dude, I love uh, Hithlodeus, actually, like, a lot. Furthermore, we've confirmed that his studies into Dynamis, as well as his creation of Meteon, were entirely private pursuits. No one else we spoke with appeared to possess the Chief's depth of knowledge or the sub on the subject, and neither did we hear any tales of stolen research. Which means that if Hermes himself harbors no desire to bring down an apocalypse, then he might be recruited to help prevent one. Or so saith the illustrious M itself. But weren't you... According to your story, the Fourteen divined the connection between the Celestial Currents and the Final Days, but were never able to pinpoint the root cause of the Calamity. With our people's greatest minds, not to mention Hithlodeus' sharp eyes, committed to the pursuit of a solution, such an outcome seems inconceivable. The only possible explanation is if the nature of the Catalyst was so inexplicable that even we failed to perceive it. And what better fits that description than the invisible, intangible Dynamis? Which in turn leads us to our next question. How did Hermes, in his role as Van Daniel, not recognize the subject of his own research? We must assume that he either knew and was unable to help, or that he was otherwise prevented from identifying the cause in the first place. At this juncture, all we can do is speculate. To be clear, the Convocation does not tolerate acts of deception or malice. We are, practice, uh, we are practiced at perceiving truth, and would have known if Van Daniel lied to us. Hermes has no co uh, conscious wish for the world to end. Of that I am certain. It seems there is more to the tale after all. Seems that way. We conducted an investigation of our own, you see. How comforting. We seem to have reached the exact same conclusion. I see no reason to delay further. Tis time we brought Hermes into the fold, as it were. Thank you for understanding. Save your thanks. I did not say I believed your ridiculous story. But as Emmett Selk, I have a duty to examine any potential threat to our existence. No matter how ludicrous or personally offensive I may find it. Okay, I was like, damn, we're we about to do a dungeon already? Shit. I feel like I haven't been here that long. I mean, I've been here for a bit, but not that fucking long, I didn't think. Oh god, we'll level 90! Let's go! I could summon the babies! Summon the babies! Uh, anyway, that's actually a good place to stop. It's gonna be recording for a bit. But, uh, you know, I hope you guys are staying safe with everything going on. I love you all. And if you guys are enjoying Endwalker, let me know what you think down below. But I will see you guys next time. So, peace out, everyone.